Brokey side. Olaf Meister to boost it up into an off angle already. And uh, maybe Brokey will be the init initial engager. Depends on how they engage, but he is set up for a kind of bait here. But we'll see if Olaf Meister has checked for. Lands a headshot, traded though. Brokey trying to dance around the bench position now, but down he goes as well. Yeah, Carragher now the player, last player on the side here for the defensive phase, trying to hold off this attack. Cool. Great flick there from Carrigan, trying to buy space and time for his teammates to rotate in for this defense. And it's working. Just James left, but James might just get two. Absolutely, he will. And Twist is now in the 1v1. That's a clean headshot, though, coming through from Twist. And that will be phase with the opening pistol. And I know this is a hard game, another hard game to, to predict, to call, just like the last one was. But I put FaZe down for this one. I don't know how you feel about FaZe and Virtus Pro in this matchup. I think I put FaZe as the favorite. Well, as my pick, I'll say. Um, I'm, I'm still not happy with the Sanji thing, but I'm not going to hop on about that too much now. But I, I, I like I like to see uh, Twist finish off that round because I think, you know, the desk spoke about Yakinda for Virtus Pro. For me, I think like Twist is the, the massive anchor for FaZe Clan. I think in the uh, in the other pass we saw, he was a dependable pair of hands when you really needed someone to deliver. And often the multi-frag as well. Twist is always going to do that for you. Yeah. And uh, he will need to do that versus the prowess of Virtus Pro. I like the style they bring to the table with a sniper such as Jame. I feel like when it doesn't go so well, it doesn't look very pretty, but I'm a fan of it. Yes, 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 yes. Well, checking in with this round so far, you know, it's just, of course, a save for Virtus Pro. P250, and that is it. P250 full of Glocks. Brokey looking for any possible plays into the window. Quick work of these players in mid. Just get traded down, though. But, yeah, overall... Looking pretty under control here for FaZe. Olaf Meister, oh, nice. Pops there for finish to finish robot. things off. And there you go. I mean, we wouldn't really expect anything else in such a round. So it's quick 2-0, but the first buy round now coming in for Virtus Pro. And I am really excited to see, you know, how do they want to start off these T buy rounds? I'm excited to see Versus Pro on a CT half. To see how they look like around the B and short position with no Sanji. Yeah. That's going to be very, very uh, an interesting contrast. They're going to have to change their approach um, by various measures. But first, we're going to have a two-man push up mid. But it will be twist to trade on Yakinda. Now, we'll see if there's any position to um, really react to this. And uh, the answer would be no, because the bomb's in T spawn at the moment. Maybe Yakinda was due to rotate it later. Kika has also been lost on T ramp. Um, so there, there are big problems here for Versus Pro in the first buy round. A very early four versus three for FaZe Clan. That second kill um, being very important for them. You can see the new stickers on that silence. Them four as well. Looking pretty good. Red on red is always good. This is a great position for FaZe to be in a 4v3. You can just hold on to your current spots. You've got Twist looking after Connector. They have good eyes on B, good eyes on A. Forward position around ramp though. So... Carrigan could be in some trouble there if he's not able to get a quick kill. Will we be able to isolate this 1v1? That's the bomb as well in James' hand. So if he's able to take down James, that might just be the round over with. Yeah, people at home will see he just walked past an AK-47, but he can't pick it up because it would reveal his position. His gun falling to the floor. Just finishing off Buster there with the AK, switches out after exchanging with James and bounces off to victory. Carrigan... He, he's been an important player for FaZe Clan. I think he doesn't always get the credit because, you know, he's there to be the in-game game, game leader primarily. The fragging will go up and down, but on the Dust 2 we saw yesterday, he had some very aggressive pushes towards the end, which really clutched out the rounds and um, put FaZe Clan in a strong position. And he always has that extra gear for aggression and just have, has a sense for the game where he can try and take liberties. And again, you know, you're not going to make the right decision at the right time all the time, but... Uh, he definitely is an extra gear for FaZe Clan. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about Carrigan. I think one of the my favorite podcasts that I recorded was with Carrigan. He's really articulate and he's he's looking to create and continue, I suppose, to to strengthen the legacy that he has in terms of being the the IGL that from team to team is able to have a huge amount of success with different players and rosters 
you know, comprising of, well, rosters comprising of players from very different nationalities, you know, making the first international rosters work and as, as well as, you know, making Danish rosters work. He has so much experience figuring out how to optimize the team and, you know, looking to do so here with the return to phase. Such a versatile player. Once again, these eco rounds with the hero AK this time on Yukindar. In mid, unable to find any opportunities just yet. Face doing a good job, not giving those opportunities away for free. Well, the split is on towards the A bomb site here. We've got two on T ramp, two in connector as well. But there is a triangle for FaZe Clan at present. So far, so good. No one dropped just yet. Only one rifle remaining. As I say, that it is dropped from the hands of Flit. New man. And Jane will be alone with the Tech 9 now. Should be an easy frag for Karazhan, although he could get shot on the head. But rather than that, he will deliver one and take the pistol upgrade as well with his lovely Ruby Karambit. 4 0 for FaZe Clan. A clean sheet. Much unlike Manchester United versus Liverpool. <laughs> well, I'm very much looking forward to seeing where Jane decides to open his round here with the AWP and how his team will set up around that because, you know, that might be one of the operating uh, points of, you know, early action for Virtus Pro and he's going to go towards the B apartments. And, you know, Carrigan and Olaf Meister are the players for FaZe looking after that B side of the map. Jane not able to get anything. He's going to take some burn damage there as he tries to initially see if anyone will be opening themselves up to him. But again, so far, James, it's been somewhat of a theme that FaZe are not really allowing Virtus Pro to find picks in the early and mid round. They're sort of forcing, they're playing passively and forcing FaZe to commit to, to kind of deeper positions. With that said, though, the two man play around this A ramp position is quite interesting because this could give a lot of information and possibly a kill but if rain goes back he's not he's going to go for this busters around the corner waiting for that and rain he knows not to bite off more than he can chew he's going to fall back and what does that tell them though it does that indicate an a play phase will keep three towards a for now yeah if they if they expect that it's going to be a lurker in palace and seeing a player a ramp means it's an a play if you see two plays towards a it's almost always an a play we can see the rotations coming through now and there's essentially four players on the A bomb site for FaZe Clan. So if they've looked at demos and see that like Keycut's almost always in Palace, for example, and they spot someone else on ramp, then that's why they may be so prepared for this as uh, they're going to have Carrigan on shorts as well. We'll keep an eye on the radar because Yukindar is creeping for maybe a short play later on, looking to plant the bomb for short perhaps as versus Pro. But again, this has been a false start on the A bomb site. And I think Jame realizes what is happening here as Yukindar actually is going to be entering the B bomb site, getting a kill on Carrigan, but he's got to surely make a take a forward position here before the rotation comes through for FaZe Clan. Moving towards short rather than the apps. He is shift walking, so Twist won't have the information as he is in the underpass. And look at the rotation from FaZe. They are all over the shop. We've got uh, Olaf Meister and T-Spawn at present, who may have a flank on Keycut, who has got a flank on Twist, but he looks towards Olaf. We've got stereo frags, one for either side, in fact. Things get more interesting now as uh, FaZe Clan move in with the high ground. Jamie at the back of the bomb site, two versus three. Really uh, limited on where he can stand. He's got Yakindar to work with now as they've got a crossfire on the site. Brokey by the window in the market. James going to be real careful about his positioning. A quick scope misses it though. Crap pick from Brokey. Yakindar 1v1 now. Rain getting closer. Yakindar will drop and it's 5 0 for FaZe Clan if he can get there fast enough, which he certainly can. Wow. Oh. Brilliant stuff there from FaZe on the retake, but Yakindo, what a key kill onto. We're able to at least get a lot of economic damage. They get the bomb planted for the additional bonus money for each player, you know, $800 for everybody else on the team. So, I mean, great recovery, but unable to convert. And of course, that's ultimately what it comes down to. Still nothing on the board here for Virtus Pro. And FaZe looks so comfortable. They have great info so far. Fast pace from Yukindar up the catwalk position. Doesn't find what he's looking for, though. Did wonder if he would uh, <coughs> go through that connector smoke, but he jumped into window instead. However, Olaf Meister was close enough to hear that rotation and will be able to punish it. And again, it's a false start for versus Pro, a four versus five early. Promising start for FaZe Clan. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Rain there with the flashbang, looking for more information. And he'll get it. So that's going to help them know what they what to do in terms of setup. 
Brokey's going to move into the kitchen to play more defensively towards B. Shorten his rotation time towards that A site, which is where the push is coming. Olof has to be careful. There's the swing. Flit takes him down. Rain able to defend for just a moment longer. Takes out Kika, but it's a 3v3. Opportunity arises now for Virtus Pro towards this A site, but not enough that they could take the site and get a plant in. So they're going to rotate off of this. And interestingly, we've got Carrigan on Catwalk. I don't know if he's going to be able to hear any steps. I think he's a little bit too far away. And Flit's position is quite destabilizing. They know he's in that area. Yeah, oh. Most people just holding fire for now, but Carrigan starts to wonder as things are very quiet indeed. I think he's heard it now. He should be close enough. The question is the rotation. You can see the awareness there. The HE grenade into that jungle position. Carrigan's going to be very important, but Jame is ready. Very he, That man knows his angles, but as you can see, the rotation has come through now. But Brokey is waiting. Timing is going to be everything. How patient can Flip be here? Jame on the other side misses the flick. Jame a, a little cold going into this one. That's the second shot I've seen him with, and it's not often you can say that. We'll get there eventually, though, and Flit will have some good timing. Twist eliminated last, and versus Pro are on the scoreboard. A fantastic round from Flit. Totally... Certainly ruined this round for FaZe. Up until this point, it was looking so good. Ooh. And Flit really just threw the wrench at FaZe. Hit them in, in the face. And that's the first round for Virtus Pro, but still, of course, a lot more to be done. Double orbs picked up by FaZe. Bolt. Bolt stuff. We'll see if it catches Virtus Pro off guard. Very much so. And again, we see another round where Yakindar is very focused on getting deep into that short position. There is a very nice uh -oh. pop flash uh, that you can see from the like to Searson. If he's got an AWP on short, he'll, he can sometimes do a, a pop flash into the connector area, bouncing it off the wall, which can give you a, a nice glidey peek. Not seeing that just yet from Yakindar. There is a flashbang from the CT side, but no fatal connection. Another five versus four. I feel like FaZe have got a man advantage in every round so far. Well, this, this is the benefit of the double AWP because it, it wasn't expected that there would be an AWP holding that position because they haven't played an AWP in round B so far. They had, I think, an idea that Brokey was elsewhere with his. So that that double AWP has, has given them the 5v4 and VP, are res they reset, and they're going to re exec into the B site on top of the AWP. We'll see if they have success. Maybe expectant Olof Meister put in the corner. Carrigan goes to the bench once again. Olof Meister deeper than he was on the pistol. It gets the first play. There's the bomb as well. That's a great second frag, and he still has some position and some a few bullets left. A headshot to Yakindar, and Jame is left. It's like worst case scenario, right? You guys go ahead. If it all goes wrong, then I'll just chill with my $9,700 AWP. Yeah. I sold mine for like $1,700. Well, so far. Oh, nice shot. But again, it's it's uh, not that impactful. But you know, this is a round in which, in a VP, they start off in the apartments, and then they lose a player. They get picked by Carrigan's orb again. They didn't expect an orb to be on that angle, which is why it was such an easy frag for Carrigan. The way that you peek into a rifle, if you expect it to be a rifle versus an orb, is quite different. And so at that point, they had so many players. You can see how many players are in the apartments. There's four players, which means that they have no presence elsewhere on the map. And that kill stops them from Carrigan getting into the B site. So now they have a bunch of players with no map control. And so at that point, phase, they know what's going to happen because they have all of the information and there's no pressure anywhere else on the map. And that is something that is going to continue to be problematic for Virtus Pro, I feel. You know, I feel like they need to be, that's what the default, that's the purpose of defaults, you know, is, is to be able to create pressure everywhere so that the other team is less certain of what's going to happen. But so far, James, FaZe have been a step ahead. They know what's happening and they, they prepare for it. And more than not, that goes well for them. Buster and Kika with a combined one kill at the uh, upper echelon. Olaf Meister has got nine. That second kill was so sick, the way he swung back to the, the the point of engagement and then corrected straight to the head of that second player. So quick. That's not easy to do, even for a pro. Very nice done. Very nicely done by Olaf Meister there. Carrigan now, where is he headed with the uh, AWP? Well, he's headed to the bench because he's been domed by Yakindo, who is once again fast into that mid position and has some firm control for the time being. 
Yeah, so really huge pick. They know Carrigan's a B player as well, and they'll see the, the AWP has dropped. So they, this gives them a lot of options into the mid round of thinking, okay, how do we attack this? We know we've killed the B player, and they're, they're holding in mid, they're resetting the situation. FaZe are in a spot where there is a world where FaZe play for info, and some teams might push a uh, ramp like this. For info, you might have a two-man push, and you see like a pop flash. Kika would be quite vulnerable to that because he's playing by himself, but Range is holding this. And they're kind of just gambling on the current positions that they have. And I think this is a good option for FaZe. Because Virtus Pro would own them if, if they went for an info play right now. Uh-oh. Better fall back, Rain. Yeah, he will. Oh, here is fall back with the reload. Flip threatening to be a problem again, though. He's taking some very aggressive positions around Connector. And that'll make... Rain's position is very problematic. I mean, it's a hard job anyway, playing in that shallow position. You know, there's lots of options I feel like they can kind of exploit. Or they can say, you know what? We, we're not convinced that what Virtus Pro, Virtus Pro's adjustments are good enough to continue to work against what we've been doing. We just missed a few shots in that last round. Let's just keep doing what we've been doing, which is generally a passive approach. They just being sort of reactive to what VP have been doing. They've been trying to hold on to their utility in most cases cases uh, and playing somewhat conservatively but the opening smokes here coming f through from VP for that early mid control slight presence there from twist tossing in the HE the Kindar back to his usual shenanigans with that reasonably quick movement up catwalk so VP open up with this mid control but at the same time, Rain is in a position with Twist in connector to be able to push this. Nice opener. Wow, Twist gets a second one too. Great flash comes through, Flip. Not ready for that one. Kiko has to respond quickly up the A ramp into the A site, looking to try to make good of this bad situation. And they're doing just that. Three versus three now. Yeah, Rain, he's been good on the A bomb site, but he is caught with grenades in his hand. That's given an opening to Virtus Pro. That's allowed him to get back into this round. Broki spotting one in the sandwich position. And that's Jame. Got to be real careful about him. But these smokes will soon come and go. The question is, how do they plant the bomb? One towards Connector again. Twist taking some pot shots towards that palace area. But he's not going to overcommit to this. Jame trying to find an angle on him, but he's exposed himself to CT. And Brokey announces his position. Bomb needs to be collected now. 40 seconds. They're going to have no smokes left to plant. Brokey creeping around the smoke. He cut running out of bullets down to the Glock here. Desperately trying to find him. Awkward scenes in CT. And it will be a ninth round for FaZe Clan. Virtus Pro need enough rounds towards the end of the half to give them a fighting chance in the second. And that's not happening right now. Buster still on one kill. Yeah, that was a that, that was a, almost a good recovery there for VP. Just shy of getting the plant down. That's so unfortunate. Getting kind of stuck. And... Yeah, this push was fantastic. <laughs> that Love second that. second shot was a laser. Yeah. And it's going to be difficult now for VP to come back into this one. They kind of have that, you know, their loss bonus has been reset. They're, they're spending all their money. So they really need to find success here. But we've got the double up back in play for phase once again. And we've got, you know, Carrigan in the B apartments with that AWP, which actually frees up Olofmeister quite a bit because it's, you know, Carrigan can quite confidently anchor that position. And Olaf could leave him there on that B site entirely if he wanted to. But James with the takedown twist over the top of the connector smoke. Big win early here for VP. Yeah, that was a that was a completely failed flashbang for Twist. So that's definitely something which needs to be reviewed in a demo. Oh, they're going to A as well. Off of that. Three dudes in the palace. Two dudes in the palace. And uh, Buster will be on the ramp. Flit still a thorn in the side as far as Connector is concerned. He's the backup for Yakindar, who is dropped by Brokey. It's the opening kill for FaZe Clan. But they're running out of members. Jane will trade and now two remain. Olaf Meister with some sound cues and Flit is waiting for him. You can see him shooting behind the box. Where are the angles though? And he will thin the numbers somewhat, but it's going to be worse for FaZe Clan. One Ooh. versus three, a nice tag, but no kill. And Olaf Meister is off to save what he can. Versus Pro make it to three. Hey, they could still get six rounds out of this half. It looks bad right now. It looks terrible right now, but they could still get a really good score from this half. Yeah, they could definitely still kind of recover this one. It was a, it was an, actually quite an interesting rotation. You know, they get that initial pick 
around the, the mid position, and then it's you know they, they decide to go for the the rotation into a two players in Palace. It looks quite difficult, but be given the fact that FaZe had removed all of their defense from the A site, it worked out really nicely for Virtus Pro. So, yeah, FaZe in a position where you know finally their economy is. I mean, can't see all of the money just yet. He saved, but other than that, the rest of his teammates don't really have enough money to buy with him. But they, they could buy a couple of pistols, uh, quite possibly. So we'll see how Olaf Meister decides to use the Hero AK in this round. He will be the highlights for this round. Presumably, the chances will kind of live and die by what Olaf is able to accomplish. And you'd expect and want to see him get something early if if that's how you win around like this if you get that early pick take the initiative early and then that causes a lot of that creates a lot more opportunities for you as a team with worse weaponry yeah he has one of the better spawns as we can see and he's headed towards the a bomb site i wonder if he was in carrigan's position maybe perhaps he'd go for a fast play towards the palace but for where he is let's see where where he chooses to go he tries to do something spawn based, maybe he goes to Palace anyway. Right? It will be uh, essentially Rain's position, it looks like. And he's got the cavalry with him as well. So he can, can potentially have a pistol wide swing for him to create some space, find some information, and have him drop a rifle on the opposition. However, Virtus Pro have eyes on the B bomb site, it looks like, with not even a lurker towards A. Completely different look from them. Maybe inspired by the timeout we saw as well. Well, yeah, they've guessed wrong on the stack. And Carrigan only has a P250. It's hard to expect too much from Carrigan here. Rain's peaked ramp, though, and he sees nothing. So that rotation might just have time to come through. But they need to commit to this. They don't know the climate's on mid, and they, that may make them paranoid. But, you know, they don't know if anybody's in the palace. Where is the rifle? Olaf Meister still on the A bomb site, and maybe it's too late to rotate now as we got Brokey in the palace, but Carrigan is alone doing some damage, but no frag. And I think maybe a larger gamble needed to be taken there. They do have rain on the uh, flank, but um, I think they had a small window of, of opportunity for rotation. And now that the A B bomb site is more or less secured, James starts to check his six look behind him, although he is covering short as well. So. Maybe there is a smidgen of opportunity for Rain to get a frag. But even if he does, I don't think he retrieves a weapon here unless he Kindar goes deep. We've seen Rain do things for P250, but this round won't be one of those times. Yeah. Yeah, I think this was really on uh, Carrigan to get that opening kill and then survive for maybe two or three seconds. And with that, there would have been the opportunity to get into the site for his teammates on the rotation. It was actually very close. If Carrigan had had like one nade or something, just, just something to buy an extra four or five seconds, that could have been uh, made the difference here to get some of the phase players into position to have some fights that could have could have made the rounds possible. But that was not the case, and VP will pick that one up, and I'm sure they'll be certainly quite happy with that. Olaf, of course, able to keep hold of the AK-47 and bring it into this next round as well. Always nice having the AK on the CT side. And overall, again, FaZe have been quite successful. It's sort of come down to VP having to make those mid-rounds plays generally to to find success. Their openers haven't often been ho uh, too good for them. Quick mid peak coming through. Trying to disturb that, mid, that early mid control in the default of VP. Yeah, but we have seen a change now. Virtus Pro not running exactly the same rounds. Ukindar no longer top mid, making fast plays on short and such. Instead, we have Buster lurking. And Ukindar holding things down as far as the underpass is concerned. Reigned and Olof in the shadow position. So we've got differences on, the, uh, on both teams now here in round number 14. The dying rounds of the first half. But we haven't seen him do most of the dying in this round just yet. Yeah, Carrigan switched his positions as well. He's not playing the apartments anymore. He's playing catwalk and he's given Brokey the, the kind of jail position at the back of B. Small small changes. We'll see if it helps. Carrigan gets the first contact and he's going to go down. Oh, Twist actually trades that one. 
Yeah, but the split is still on because Yukindar can pick up the slack now. He has made his way towards short once again. Brokey not ready for Flip's position. Bomb dropped, but the trade is here. That creates some more space for Versus Pro as they have a 3v2 advantage now. And that rotation is coming through from Olofmeister and Rain. Let's not forget they were playing that shadow position. The rotation is long and painful as Olofmeister gets decapitated by the likes of Yukindar. And there's nothing more for Rain to do in this round, especially without a diffuse kit. It's his turn to try and save, and Yukindar's already on the hunt here, looking for plays to make their way towards the palace. Rain will drop a smoke in between. You can open those boxes and uh, get a cheeky one way. Many years ago, saw Apex do a nice clutch on the A bomb site with that, but the bomb site is uh, not the right one on this occasion, and Rain will just be trying to survive. You can see the, for those, you know, we, we, we talked about the right eye and left eye kind of advantage disadvantage yesterday on the B stream but that position that Brokey had for example um that was like he, he had a very bad angle for his opponent who had that right eye i think it's flit who dropped down and flit would have been able to see Brokey with Bro Brokey have no vision whatsoever of flit so so you got to be super aware of those spots of course you can't always control every angle and every engagement but always good to just have the awareness and five rounds for Virtus Pro. So they, they've had quite the resurgence, given how difficult the opening of this half has been. They are looking much more confident. And already Rain's going to go down, Jane connecting with the head. And they're going to march their way through to the A site. And it's going to take nothing short of some crazy Deagle headshots to stop Virtus Pro from winning this round. Kika and Jamin sandwich. Brokey's got the sack, Brokey. Oh, not oh. just not just Brokey. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. Oh dear. That looks like uh, a network issue. Yep. Which is very unfortunate. That's not good. Yeah. So. Oh, that's a difficult one. Well, there has been damage in the round, so I suppose they have got to play it out. But that is most unfortunate. We'll see who uh, takes the advantage here, as uh, Virtus Pro are making things more difficult for Face Clan now. Twist and Carrigan versus Four. Now Twist is alone towards the end of this half and I wonder if we'll have some kind of pause before, before things continue. Well, it will be 9 to 6 at half time. But uh, yeah, that was uh, an unfortunate event in that final round. We'll see what happens next. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, <laughs> hopefully that will be uh, you know quickly resolved. But yeah, I mean, you can see it on the scoreboard there. A really fast uh, you know, re recovery from Virtus Pro. It honestly looked like FaZe were pretty good for like a 12-3 or something like that, but Virtus Pro found a you know, few ways to win some of these key rounds to bring themselves into quite a competitive scoreline here on Mirage. This is the first map of this best of three for just joining us. The second map would be Ancient. I say would be, as if there's a question, we'll get there. We'll definitely get to the second map because you can't win a best of three without playing at least two maps. So that's how best of threes work. FYI. You heard it. You heard it here first, guys. Yeah. Courtesy of DDK. So into the second half, we've got the pistol and phase on that attack. We'll see what they can do with this A push that they've set up here. Kika and Jane playing very much kind of retake positions, looking to do some damage as the phase players pile into the site. However, it's the damage to be found by phase and not by VP. Flip, making sure there's no flanker. You never know. Again, that classic versus pro squad used to like a short plant with um, someone like Pasha lurking in the apartments for that rotation later on. Not the case today, though, but you can see that the memory is still there. Four versus two in favor of FaZe Clan. Looking to be the first two double figures. This would be a great way to start their T side, but VP still have something to say about this. Not with a kit, though, on these remaining two players, so they better act fast unless one is nearby. Things go from bad to worse now as James is the last man standing. And he's got Kevlar, so he may choose to save that. And, and at this point, there's more value in his Kevlar than there is in getting even two kills. Um, so it looks like he'll try to hold on to that as best he can. Well, there we go. Phase off to the start that they are looking for. And... I don't know if FaZe will have a stronger showing on, on the T side or not. I know that you wanted to see VP on the CT side. So I'm curious, you know, what are you expecting? What are you looking forward to with VP? Well, I want to see what their setup is around the, the B bomb side, especially because obviously no Sanji 
Um, you know, he'd always uh, hold the L and have like an MP9 or, or something like that. I mean, key curl as well to some degree. Uh, when necessary to, to balance economies. Once the buy rounds come through and beyond, just interested to see how things look in the flit era of versus pro. All kinds of flex stickers on these uh, T weapons. No twist is a connoisseur. He's a big shopper. Likes his quality jeans. How about that for an AK? Sure, there's a Danish man involved in these skins somewhere. One minute on the clock as they approach the B bomb site. They have one Molotov. We can see Flit has been boosted on default with a Desert Eagle up close, but let's not forget if he doesn't hit the headshot, that will be three shots rather than two. So we'll see how long he lasts here, but there is a cleanup elsewhere. Look, Mike is in the red, so he won't last very long. The 180, two kills for Flit so far. Well, there's some nice damage, three kills, but it is a T side, so I feel like in these situations, there's a bigger impact on the CT side than the T's, but of course, they've got a cheaper rifle now, so maybe they're, we're a little closer to parity, but not quite. Of course, you still have those $600 incendiaries and such. Yeah, uh, we're, we're seeing Rain pick up a Max 10. So this might strike me as like a B-Apps rush or something like that, because, you know, you get the guy with the Max 10 going first. Actually, there's a lot of players going into the mid position. I do, I do love when we see the Mac 10s um, in just general because sometimes there's application also in the when you're playing against the buy rounds depending on the kind of strat that you're doing but especially against the anti eco you get to be able to clear a lot of space with this player and there's a lot of utility that someone like Rain can have here obviously holding onto the connector position his teammates moving through to that B site indeed going through the apartments uh oh not good engagement for Rain with the Mac 10 three headshot position or players effectively yeah. Best weapon to lose, though, he can find that information and uh, it gives versus, sorry, it gives FaZe Clan a better idea as to the climate around the map. Olaf Meister also with not much to lose, just pushing with the new SP. But that's some bonus money for your kid, though. Got the right weapon for the job. Now, what is the exit strategy for FaZe Clan? And that's partly what Olaf Meister was asking. Is the exit strategy apartments? The answer is no. They can head elsewhere. Carrigan holding on to short now. So that may be where they head to. Not much for VP to do here. No Kevlar on these remaining players. We'll see if they hold on to the Mac 10. It's one of many guns you could play on T ramp, for example, from a CT perspective. Of course, Fur used to play that with the MP9 or the auto shotgun. So anything can work if you're good enough. And hey, that's AWP money, right? Your Kindar Sanji for this round. No, he's not. Never mind. <laughs> he's upgraded to the M4. Indeed. Get that upgrade going. See if they've got Sanji. They've got 5k plus there. It's a brave new world. Delayed mid take coming through from phase. The flash is there and... Looking pretty good here. Connector control secured. They do have the bomb top mid as well. So now the bomb gets to rotate out. No longer necessary to support that position. It's Brokey with the AWP, no less, who's holding onto the bomb. And they're going to set up that B split with Rain able to create more pressure from that connector to uh, position to just make it kind of difficult to guess what's going on. But there's two players to defend the B apartments. So that this could be problematic for phase on the way in they've got ak's versus an m4 or buster though and that may be the difference maker the awp is here as well they haven't seen his body just as he repositioned but twist will be here to trade yakindar now holding a dirty disgusting grotesque off angle by the van and that could be a big problem Hiding in plain sight, they're not expecting him. Brokey goes down, and now Twist has got to consider fighting with the bomb and putting it in an awkward position. But Yakindar's got to think about the rest of his bullets and where he chooses to put them. He can't really afford to reload in this position. Down goes Jane from the back, but it's Rain versus two. With 27 seconds on the clock, trying to move through quickly, trying to sweep on that bench position. Off angle for key cut, and that will be enough for Virtus Pro to win the round. So uh, well played by the B defenders there, just to slow things down by time for the rotation. And that's all that they needed to do. 
Buster only got one, but that ended up being you know more than enough given how well the delay worked, especially as you said with Yakindar in that position by the van. He just he just created so much of a delay, very well done, and that's such an important round to win, of course. You know VP uh, puts them to seven and it slows down Phase. Phase still with enough money to get a few rifles in this one, not more than two AKs, but maybe that'll be enough. Again, B upon this pressure. We got two players pushing mid though from VP. Very aggressive. I don't I think this is going to completely catch phase off guard. This could be hugely problematic. <gasps> Rain. Okay, there Flitz is lurking. They haven't seen him. Oh no. Twist goes down. That's one that's one major weapon out of the picture. I can see Broki trying to bait there with the bomb. They, they killed the bomb carrier without seeing the bomb, which is really impressive behind that smoke grenade. This round has become very, very interesting indeed. Carrigan has the shadow just before the flash, but doesn't have the kill. Oh, no. He got flashed by Rain, I believe. Oh, dear. It's very unfortunate. Well, this push has worked out really well for VP. Completely caught phase off guard. They had so many players in the B apartments. They were not ready to see the mid push. And I love that from VP because they, they took that initial mid control. They saw that there was no presence there. So then they think, okay, well, how far can we go before we actually run into someone from phase? And the question the, the answer is actually very far. And that was such uh, you know, such a, a forward position that it basically just put the round into complete chaos as far as phase were concerned. Very difficult time for FaZe. Virtus Pro on the up and up. They forced out an eco out of FaZe now. So VP quickly recovering the deficit on the scoreboard. They're going to send it on an A side phase. Can I see the scoreboard quickly, please, Mr. Observer? Okay, thank you. Both pistols won by phase will certainly be helping them with this scoreline. Otherwise, would be a hell of a lot closer. There's a me THE grenade. Carrigan wondering where uh, most of his HP has gone, where all of it's gone, in fact, as Keycut's able to follow up and the bomb's been spotted and swatted with the final bullets by Keycut. Headshot with the uh, final bullets there. Speaking of headshots, I lost my star. Never mind, it's all over. Nine rounds on the board and we can move on to the next one. The first round, first game rather, the first game of this series, Ancient to Come. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see what Ancient looks like. I, I wonder if there's going to be a, a big disparity in ability or not. You know, time will tell. But for now, you know, we, we're seeing that VP are recovering. They were looking like they were going to get just totally owned, honestly. Like, it, it was kind of crazy that they managed to string so many together. Phase starting to to struggle. Five AKs in this buy round, though. Yeah, they haven't won a buy round in this half just yet, which does not bode well. Yes, oh. basically, if you ignore the pistol, they haven't won a round, essentially. Shame. It takes down Carrigan. It... That's a problem. Is that Prince? He's a connoisseur. I, I believe that they wanted to just to go fairly quickly into the A site, but that, that kill from James kind of stopped all of the momentum. Now they're trying to adjust in the mid rounds. A minute left, retaking mid. The smokes were already have already gone from this mid position, so it's quite risky. I was looking for a timing there with Flitz. They're going to find it. What a collapse there from VP into mid. And that's just cut off this. This is, I mean, th this is looking very difficult for FaZe now. Yeah, it's looking very comfortable for Versus Pro at present. And this is a great round. This is a great money building round for them. They could do with uh, some more money in the, in the pockets here. So if they can keep the numbers high at the end of this round, that would certainly help. And uh, despite it being five versus two, they're not going to wait around. Your Kindar is going to close the net. It's like one of the ending episodes of The Wire twist. He's trying to do something. No, he's got 20 seconds in a one versus three, but surely he can't be expecting Yakindar to come in from the back, focusing on the connected position for now, and Yakindar will stop him from picking Jame. And Virtus Pro make it to 10. Double figures for them now. Two rounds behind FaZe Clan. 
and it might soon just be one because it's another eco for phase. I mean, they can half buy, they can spend a little bit here. How many in a row has that been for phase now? They what lost bonus are they at? Twenty nine hundred. So that's four, four rounds lost in a row at least. And it's going to be interesting to see what they're able to do to kind of change their prospects here now. Because again, VP finding lots of comfort. We're not seeing early mid control coming through from phase. They've opted to go for late mid takes if at all. And whenever they've sort of piled players towards A or B early on. It seems like VP have been quite content to hold that, and VP tend to push mid when there's no presence there at all. So, so far, VP doing all of the right things on this defense, and you know, going into this HUDless cinematic anti-eco. It's uh, looking, looking pretty good. I'm quite confused. <laughs> but but uh, uh, We're doing it right now. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Rain with the Deagle close, but not quite. Twist now suddenly finds himself alone. No one remains but Twist. It's like Phasmophobia when no one's responding to the radio anymore and you wonder if everyone's dead or not. The answer is yes. We continue to catch up. Versus Pro. Well, not we, but they. Yes. I'm a part of Versus Pro. Especially not now. <laughs> Especially not now. Yeah. This is a hard one because the you know, phase need to find the, the the correct adjustments. That's like what the battle is all about right now. And VP have really settled into a, quite a comfortable defense at this point. James been causing some problems with the AWP and you know, playing from various positions, but generally shutting down movement towards the A site. And the delay from VP when phase try to go to B apartments has been great as well. Oh, those are those hot hands things. So those are Enormous. have some kind of reaction in them, which lets off heat. So people will use them to try and keep their hands warm. The warmer your hands are, the more nimble you are. Playing in the winter, like my bedroom has the the boiler in for the apartment, so it has an extractor that goes outside, which means that that lets cold air in, which means that my room is freezing in the winter. So I have really cold hands and it's a, it's a damn struggle to play properly. I always have an excuse. It doesn't matter what well, the situation is. I've always got some kind of an excuse, but that's one of I the worst things. I forget what the product's called. I've been recommended it a few times. It's like two, three hundred dollars, I think. But there's a product that shoots like infrared light or something at your hands and it just keeps everything like a certain temperature. Oh, you need to wear sunscreen for that, mate. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know about that, but yeah, I haven't tested it myself, but I hear it's good. Either well, way. Flitz lost his position in the window as he has been Molotov, but he's still got angles on short for the time being. And it's FaZe Clan's turn to get close to Connector, just as Yakindar did in the previous half. There's that deeper Molotov to deny information. And they hear a connect with him as well, so they know. And there's a gap in that smoke, and I do wonder if that could be somewhat deliberate, because it's a pretty simple lineup. There's another gap as well. Flit got to be real careful here, because Olaf Meister will spot him. Too many gaps! And this is the opening they've been looking for. Kiko, they were to take down Twist in the meantime. And Carrigan, he's lurking in the B apartments. And his teammates are coming. They're coming to split that B site. Actually, there's no split. They're all going to be coming from apartments. This could, I mean, depending on how much Buster gets, this could be a disaster for FaZe. Opportunity wow. now for VP because if Buster can keep slowing them down, he's able to get out of the position. He's got a flash, he's got an HE, he can keep doing damage here, he can keep delaying. James now made his way to the window, takes down Brokey, bomb now on the ground. Buster, where is he gone? Oh, Buster is still doing damage oh. and the HE, it's perfect. Takes down Olaf Meister, finishes off the round, the worst possible outcome. It was a five versus three. He had such a big decision to make as well. I'm low health. Am I going to be able to get to the window in the first place? Do I stand and fight? Do I try and do what I can? Get some information, try and squeeze out another kill. Split second decision to just um, go past the angle, spots the players, allows James to get into position. Two red health players for FaZe Clan. Just goes from bad to worse and Versus Pro have tied the score. Ignoring the pistol, it's been a dominant CT half of Versus Pro thus far. And now they threaten to take the lead. And I don't know what FaZe Clan can do about it. They don't really have the money on all the players. Brokey, three and a half thousand. Rain, three and a half thousand. The rest could pull the AKs out, but I'm sure they want to buy together. Yeah, that 
it's crazy because you know the logic makes sense for Karrion to make the call. Okay, if we all go together, it kind of doesn't matter as long as we just trade out the kill. Even if we tr you know lose two or three players, we're still in a two v three or a three v three. But yeah, James got to the window just in time. Very unfortunate for FaZe. And again, the logic makes sense, but VP on top of the execution. And James looking after this mid position right now. It will, will force a smoke to be used to remove James. James has danger. But Flip still by connector. They have a pretty good defense here. And it's just pistols that they're up against. So should be you know, straightforward here for VP to hold this one. And so far, so good. I like it. Yakindar, he wants some frags too. Give me those eco frags. Oh, where's that come from? <laughs> oh, Olaf Meister with a couple. Nice deagle shots. Oh, you almost saw the third one happening, but Olaf Meister will be shut down. From the window to the wall, Dan. Until my IGL makes more calls. Orp, orp. <laughs> I don't have a rhyme for the rest of that, but I'll you know I'll just finish it there. Yeah, some you know some cosmetic damage for versus pro. They can withstand it for now. We can see at the end of that round, Buster had almost ten thousand dollars once the win bonus came through. So they won't be concerned just yet. Jame, the man with the AWP, ten and a half thousand dollars at this juncture. So they are comfortable. They are swimming on their backs, beaming in the sun, beaming. FaZe Clan as well, Rain the first to fall. Five versus four. Now it's versus Pro's turn to enjoy the luxury of these five versus four situations as FaZe Clan did in the first half. What's that smoke? Interesting. On the A side, that must be a, an accident, surely. <laughs> Definitely an accident. And interestingly, like Twist showed some presence towards a ramp and then ran away. So right now, VP should be reading the B apartments. But it's all very unclear at this point. You see Keycut's looking for info here. They don't know what's going on. The push coming through the A ramp here. A quick contact. Yakindo in trouble, having to smoke himself. He just has to survive. He just has to delay. Now do you perhaps trying to find a flashbang to even increase that delay even more. Still alive, actually. They haven't done, they haven't pushed his position. Jane will go down to Olof, but Yikinda, he's still here. He's still causing a lot of delay and problems. He's still alive. No way. Oh. Yikinda gets one out of that. Unbelievable. 3v3. Kika up on the flank. Yeah, this flank is huge. There's a smoking connect side. His possession in jungle with broke. He turns around at the perfect time. Down goes Flitz as well, leaving Buster in a one versus three. And Maybe FaZe Clan needed more pressure to try and raise their score somewhat. It will be an expensive round for them, but they will tie the score again. It's been a drought, but they have found a 13th round, which puts both teams three rounds away from the first map. Yeah, that was fantastic. I think, you know, the contact play was a great call off of that reset. Again, you know, it's quite difficult for VP. They're in a spot where they have to kind of confirm the information. The, the, it's more likely that there's a reset into a B play, but they have to confirm that and, you know, FaZe take full advantage. We'll see if they can replicate that success. Maybe they'll try to facilitate another late walkout into that, another late contact into A. But first, in it comes the early round. They're looking for that mid control to begin with. Smoke on Cat. Yakindar ready for the challenge. Yakindar's been problematic. Yakindar is certainly a very strong player. And then now phase hold these mid positions. There's no reaction here. Also pa possibly looking to see if there's a, a retake. Is, if there's like a flash setup, but there's nothing. And that will mean now phase will make their way forward even more. Not including uh, weapons saved. I think this round is Im implications for game points here. The 
Molotov goes deep and won't be on the balcony. Olaf Meister not ready for the position he was playing earlier on, and Twist isn't ready either. Three kills in quick succession. High ground now for <gasps> Virtus Pro, but a suicide from Yakindar opens the opportunity for the bomb to be rescued. But FaZe Clan still have to jump into the apartment, rescue that bomb, and make their way back down. And as we can see, Virtus Pro have reinforcements in the apartment, but Flitz taking his time. They're playing for the overall W. Brokey posted up on the market, and that is an important kill. James always an important kill, but Keycap's right behind him, making rain. Leaving Rain in a one versus two. Maybe he's got some smoke to play with. Trying to hide in it now, but Kika has the angle. Like a little jiggle, and Virtus Pro will retain and move to 14. <laughs> There's a second I was like, oh my goodness. If they win the round because Yukindo died to his own Molotov, like stepping in his own Molotov, that would be just crazy. But it's a recovery. It's 14 to 13. And this that's terrifying because he's... They had just won rounds, and so the loss bonus completely reset. They do have enough, thanks to the plant especially, to be able to get you know offer a full buy into this next round. But yeah, lots of problems for FaZe when they're trying to you know get these executions. I don't know whenever it's been. I don't know if there's a single round in which it's been clean, or has gone as as it's supposed to. And that's credit to VP's defenders for sure. But that that, yeah. uh, that bomb plant's critical yeah. to give us another competitive round here will be the final timeout for, for FaZe Clan here. We can see four of four, top of the screen. It's an interesting three maps. I feel like these all these maps should be really close. I don't know, I mean, except Ancient is a bit of a question mark for me and because I feel like it's still quite a new map. So I don't know if you can really predict or feel very confident in a prediction there, but I feel like, you know, Mirage, us too. These are both maps in which both of these teams are going to be very competent. Yeah, I think for the matchup, for this particular matchup, mm -hmm. they're three very interesting um, mm -hmm. maps. And the fact versus Pro left Ancient open with one recorded official in the last three months yeah. is very interesting to me in a promising way as opposed yeah. to a yeah. will they have anything way. I think, I think um, they'll certainly have something for the major for sure. Oh yeah, no doubt. No doubt. That's just, we know that about VP. We know that they're the t that kind of team that innovates and does a lot of work tactically to develop their playbook. And they probably would never play a map going into a major or feel confident leaving a map open if they weren't confident in their playbook on that map. And, you know, phase, very slow round. VP not opting for mid pressure, really. They've got eyes on mid with flit through the window, just, you know, cursory checking on this one. Sees absolutely nothing. It's either a contact into A or B, and here goes the B play. Buster ready to receive. Traded out v uh, VP, actually, not having the kind of time they need for the rotation here, and that's going to give FaZe the plant and some good post plant positioning. Interestingly, this may be the end of the round because Virtus Pro don't really have position, and if they try and push this and die, only Jame can buy. So at this p at this point they yeah. can't afford to lose all of their weapons so this is this is they've been outmaneuvered and they've got to knock the king over for this particular round and concede it otherwise they uh you know things could easily get a hell of a lot worse they will feel like they're still in a strong position but they certainly have to hold on to these weapons and they'll do that phase clan the same for them they're very low on money and they will lose rain in the process 4,100 though is okay, and he can get a drop if he needs more grenades. But 14 apiece. Again, FaZe Clan were somewhat lacking in this half, but when the pressure rises, they, I mean, they're both at this point just squeezing around out here and there. The margins are narrowing for both teams. Yeah, they really are. And, oh, it's, it's not the perfect time too. We, we, oh, we get double ops for the first time from VP. Oh, James, is he going deep with this push? He's just holding the underpass for now. Oh, great flashbang. But James still here. Will you expect an orb? It's going to be very scary for Carrigan to face against this. A smoke to try to get out of this position. James, oh, he's going to get tagged up down to 48. Able to get out of there, though. Thanks to the support in, his, in the mid from his team. Pretty scary opening exchange. And he didn't get to show his AWP, James. I think that would have been valuable to even just shoot it because then they might not expect there to be an AWP also in apartments. And that is part of the benefit of going to the double AWPs is the surprise factor. 
Speaking of surprise facts, her face clan have left ramp open with Twist lurking extremely passively in the palace. You can see the angle he's holding. And now FaZe Clan will slowly approach. Olufmeister top mid. We'll see what his intentions are later on. And for Versus Pro, there are essentially four players around this A bomb site. Buster's been left on an island with that second AWP, but he has the angle to buy some time. Oh, the timing from Jame, though. Unscopes at the worst possible time, which gives FaZe Clan um, some position towards Sandwich and such, but they are certainly on fire as well. And Rain has to fall back. That'll allow Kikas to get a kill, but have a look at this kill feed. It is almost all FaZe Clan now, and this is a disaster for Virtus Pro. They've looked so strong in this half, and Buster finds himself alone. His teammates wiped out Scorched Earth on the A bomb site, and there'll be questions about what Virtus Pro can bring into this potentially final round now as FaZe Clan move towards game point. Crazy. It's really nuts because you're thinking, okay, well, it's just worked out really well. The double ops has allowed VP to stack A with four players because they can just let Buster handle and, and you know, delay B by himself. And then it you know, comes down to actually hitting hitting all the shots. And FaZe just hit their shots as they ran into the A site. So this, you can't argue with that. 15 to 14, crazy. It's absolutely crazy. If you consider how... <laughs> you know how long FaZe had a lead in this and then we're struggling to get a single round. They're finally winning rounds again at the last possible second. We'll see if that uh, can continue. I mean, of course, they've got to capitalize here. Just as James mentioned, the money sucks for Virtus Pro. So lots of advantages here for FaZe. Yeah, and considering this is the pick of Virtus Pro and, um, you know, as viewers, it is an unknown what they can offer on Ancient. This is a big round this is a big map for them. Base Clan will feel like they will be at a huge advantage if they can convert this. And how can they not? M4 Famas and a bunch of pistols. Face Clan will start slow. They can smell the desperation from Versus Pro. But you don't want to take too long about it. You don't want to overplay your hand and end up in a disadvantageous situation. The clock is your friend until it's your enemy. There's a there's a contact set up in the palace set up by FaZe. FaZe were expecting there to be like a push somewhere. It's like a palace play. So Brokey could take contact and then fall back really passively and then Twist gets all the following kills. That's kind of how that setup would be. But there's no there's no palace push from Virtus Pro. And what I don't want to see happen is that FaZe play passive for so long that they give themselves no time to finish the round. I feel like that's... I have concerns that that might happen. It's The, the bomb is now making its way through palace. It looks like they're going to fake B. This is also quite... I'm quite worried for FaZe, I have to be honest. Well, we still have three players on the A bomb site for now. Versus Pro seem to be non believers, but Key Curtis is starting to wonder. And now Twitter reveals himself at Palace. So 30 si 39 seconds on the clock. There's a potential split off the A bomb site, but it's advantage versus Pro, of course. They still have a man by default as well. Yakinda with the M4. Down he goes and Bust is trying to rotate to CT. Ray needs an angle on this. As the bomb's getting planted, he'll swing into it and just about get the kill. That was worrisome, but now it's Jame versus three. Hoping to be given something, but I don't see him finding much of anything here. A Desert Eagle and no kit versus three players with rifles trying to desperately just find anything to bring into this bomb site, but hasn't found anything just yet. AK collected, but I don't see the fuse kit, so it's going to be real hard for him to do anything here. I think this one may be lost, and indeed it is. Punctured by Brokey.